Welcome again to part two of uh, Mathematical Genius Thinking. Again, this is all based on uh, principles behind a course I've done for middle schoolers and slightly older kids and even teachers too, uh, called Mathematical Thinking, available at the website. And I've, in a previous video, I explained what I meant by the first two principles. Let me go through the next three principles. Uh, number three, math geniuses, school math geniuses, love to engage in intellectual play, and play is the key to being a successful mathematician. Mathematicians love to play. Um, it can go in all sorts of fun uh, ways. For example, in a sort of a classic way, here's a very sort of Greek thing to do, which is to think of uh, arithmetic and, uh, and algebra in terms of geometry. Here's a four by four dot of squares. Um, in my previous video, I gave you one way to think of this picture. If I'm playful, I can see another way to think of this picture if I look at these L shapes. These are called gnomons, G-N-O-M-O-N-S, a great word. Um, this tells me if I look at these little L shapes, these gnomons, whoops, there went, one vanished. I actually see this 4 by 4 grid of squares, really a picture of the sum 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. So the sum of the first uh, 4 odd numbers is 4 squared, 16. So that means the sum of the first uh, 10 odd numbers, to do to 19, would be 10 squared, 100, and so on. Okay, well that's just very playful. But I'm, a math genius likes to go further. Well, if there's a formula for the sum of the first n odd numbers being n squared, is there a formula for the sum of the first n even numbers? And, you know, you'll, you'll go for a walk, you'll just uh, mull about this for a while, and just you know, keep this kicking about in the back of your mind, and then you might have an epiphany. Well, if you take your formula for the sum of the first n odd numbers and add 1 to each of them, that will give me 2 plus 4 plus 6, all the way up to 20 in this case. The sum of the first even numbers must be 100, Plus, how many times do I add the number 1? Well, in this case, 10 times, 110. So the sum of the first n odd numbers must be n squared, whereas if I add n 1 to each of them, the sum of the first n even numbers must be n squared plus n. That's a great sense of play right there. Um, it could be wonderful, fun stuff, like uh, if I asked you the question, whoops, I need to try to delete this and I failed. It's very fun to watch for you guys, I'm sure. Uh, Here's a great playful question that's so genius-like. Whoops, oh gosh, here we go. Is today opposite day? You often hear school kids saying a question like this. This is a very popular little question. Think about what the answer to that question is. It's great. Um, because it's, it's, a, it's a principle that happens in math all the time. For example, if I said, what's 7 raised to the power of 7 that gives the answer 3? Well, obviously the answer is 3, uh, if you know your logarithms. That's a, a, a sort of a tautological result, and most kids have a hard time with thinking that way through. But if you just stare at this, it's actually very playful to play with logarithms in this way. Uh, grand. So engage and play. Uh, push ideas, go further, just, uh, just, just see what your mind does. The next principle I want to go through quickly is understanding trumps memorizing. And this is one thing that makes me very sad as a teacher. And maybe it's just a developmental thing. I really should think about this deeply. But a lot of kids ask me, can you just tell me what the formula is and we'll go ahead with that. Let me memorize the formula. Sure, you can do that, but that's not exactly joyful. And you know, grand, you can memorize the quadratic formula and solve your quadratics this way, but it's much more fun to actually just uh, understand what's going on. For example, I will have t I've met teachers that will train their kids to, to memorize the following rule for multiplying by 11. For example, 52 times 11. The rule is split the number apart and then in the middle add uh, place the sum of the two digits, 5 plus 2 is 7. So apparently 52 times 11 is 572. Or 63 times 11 would be 6, 3, split them apart, and put their sum of those two digits in the middle, 693. Great, let's memorize that rule and off we go. But a math genius would be more satisfied with understanding what's going on. And, you know, I want to quickly explain this one. For example, 52 times 11. If you think of this as 52 times 10 plus 52 times 1, so it would be 520 plus 52, and actually perform the addition, you can actually see what's going on. And that rule now makes perfect sense. You can see what's going on. In fact, a math genius is now very comfortable, this example, 58 times 11. Whereas the poor other students, his or her colleagues, will be wondering what to do in that case. Uh, so understanding trumps memorizing. In fact, I really don't memorize the quadratic formula myself. Um, that's why the Greeks are so clever in doing this thing called completing the square. For example, if I need to solve x squared plus 4x I know, equals 85, 
uh, they literally thought of this geometry. Uh, this, this piece must be coming from a square that's not quite complete yet. X inches by X inches. 4X, well I want two pieces the same, I want it to be symmetrical, squares, so this must be 2X and 2X. Forcing this to be 2, forcing this to be 2, which means I'm forced to want the number there. It's missing, damn, but I'm an adult, I can do whatever I like. Add 4 to both sides, so it's really the problem is X plus 2 squared is 89, and that's actually very easy to solve. And this process really is the quadratic formula, without me ever actually having to recite or explicitly do the quadratic formula. If I see a video on the quadratic formula, i explain how this gets that famous result. Understanding trumps memorizing. What sticks in my brain more is a picture rather than a formula. Uh, and now let's just, before we run out of time, go into the what I think is the key principle of all, that math geniuses are very comfortable knowing what they don't know. There's absolutely no shame in not knowing something. And I wish we gave students a greater chance to really come to terms with what it is they don't know and really explore that and become comfortable with it. And when you don't know something, the idea is to play with it, to, to meddle around, to mess up, to make mistakes, flail. I think the saddest part of our education is that we don't give chance a kids a chance to flail in mathematics. Because often to see why something is right, you first need to see all the ways it can be wrong. That's when you really start to own an idea. Um, I can tell my students, here's the correct way to do this type of problem, but then I've just removed from them any hope of really internalizing that process for themselves and owning it. And plus, it's joyless. So, you know, there's lots of things to really sort of admit you don't know. For example, what exactly is wrong with dividing by zero? Is that okay or not? Or what about zero divided by zero? Is that one or is it not? Or, I mean, in fact, zero is just a, is a great topic for admitting you don't know something. What's two to the zero? Everyone says it's one, just because everyone says it, I have to believe it. But I don't know what this means. Multiply two by itself zero times, and apparently I get the number one from that. Um, a classic one that drove me nuts as a kid, as a fifth grader, why is negative times negative positive? I never knew why. I, I was told it was, but I had to admit to myself, I don't know why negative times negative is positive. Let me play with this and figure this out. In fact, that's, that was one of my formative questions as a, as a young budding mathematician before I knew I actually liked mathematics. So flail. Admit what it is you don't know. And, you know, play with it. Try to find out for yourself. If you can't find out for yourself, go find out from others. Go, go research. It's OK to go find out. It's OK not to know, but I like to say it's not OK not to want to find out. So math geniuses. Admit what they are, that is they, they, they don't know, they can articulate it, are comfortable with it, and are comfortable pushing, pushing through it and, um, and finding joy and success from it nonetheless. So that's my, in a very sort of brief, brief outline, the five key principles of what I think it means to be a school math genius. And if I had my druthers, I would basically reform the entire mathematics curriculum around this, giving a great opportunity for kids to flail, really really let go of memorizing formulas and getting content over quality of content, I, I think we should really get, get kids to internalize their mathematics rather than just do mathematics. But that's me. I can go on for a rant forever about that. Thanks very much.